Welcome. In this video, we will be showing you how to install and use the Database Archive utility for use in Desktop Server as a Design Time plugin. For version 3.9.1 and below, manual installation will be necessary. In all future releases, the Database Archive utility will come standard. To install, start by making sure that all Desktop Server services have been stopped and shut down Desktop Server if it is running. Next, decompress the plugin and then copy the database archive directory into your DS plugins directory. On machines running Windows, this can be found at C colon backslash lite backslash DS dash plugins. And on machines running the Macintosh operating system, you can find it at applications slash xamp slash DS plugins. Start Desktop Server, restarting with privileges if requested, and click Next. In the Enable Developer Plugins window, be certain that Database Archive is checked, then click Next. For the purpose of this video, I am going to create a test site called the database-archive.dev.cc. I am using the WordPress latest blueprint, which is available to all premium subscribers and will only work in the premium versions of Desktop Server. This blueprint will automatically download the latest version of WordPress and set it up with an admin user called Test Admin. To access the database archive utility, log into the dashboard of your local site. Select Tools, then go to DS Database Archive to get to the Settings page. As noted at the top of this page, these settings will automatically apply themselves to all of your local sites, both present and future, as long as this plugin is activated. Select how often you would like to have your databases backed up and what time you would like to have them backed up. You have the option of selecting your archive mode. Selecting a single .sql file for each site will only retain the most recent backup. Selecting a .sql file with date stamp for each site will maintain multiple backups of your databases with a date and time stamp. As stated, however, this will take up more hard drive space. In this case, I am choosing the date stamp option. Next, select your archive location. For the purpose of this video, I have opted to store it in my secondary drive in its own dedicated directory. Now that the settings have been chosen, click on Save Changes. You now have the option to run the archive utility to back up your databases using the new settings by clicking Run Archive Now, or you can wait for the utility to run at its scheduled time. After running the Archive Now command, you will find your databases all backed up in their designated directory. It must be noted here that Desktop Server must be running at the scheduled time with the database utility active in order for the backups to occur, but you do not need to be logged into any of your local sites. If Desktop Server is not running at the scheduled time, the backups will automatically occur immediately upon your next launch of Desktop Server. In the unfortunate event that you have to restore a database, you have two options, either doing it through phpMyAdmin, included with both limited and premium versions, or DSCLI, our command line interface. In this video, I am going to walk you through the steps of doing it via phpMyAdmin. For instructions on how to do it through DSCLI, you can click on the contextual help and select Restoring Archives for the steps. Accessing phpMyAdmin is easy through the Desktop Server Localhost Sites page. Simply click on Sites from within Desktop Server and a browser page will open listing all of your sites. Next, select the Database button which corresponds to the site for which you need to restore the database. Once the database is displayed, we recommend that you select the Check All box, select Drop from the drop-down menu, and then click on Go. Confirm that you wish to execute the command and the tables will be deleted. Now that the database itself is empty, click on the Import tab above. Click on Choose File and then select the .sql file that corresponds to the site's database. It will have the same name as the site in the file name. 
do not select the file containing the word credentials. This file is for other purposes and will not be used in this video. Once you have selected your file, click on Open in PHP MyAdmin, then click on Go. PHP MyAdmin will now import the database. This might take several minutes depending on the size of your file. It may even be a great time to take a bio break or go make yourself a sandwich. Once it has finished, PHP MyAdmin will show a report with how many queries it has successfully executed. In the event of a large database, you may need to repeat the file selection step multiple times in order for the whole database to be imported. In these cases, PHP MyAdmin will let you know that you need to import the file again until it is through. You can now test your site to verify that it's working. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. We'd love it if you subscribe to our channel, but we'd love it even more if you gave us suggestions for future videos to help WordPressers develop a better workflow using Desktop Server.